always. Yeah. In this opening, everything is just in case. Oh, but okay, again, bishop takes g4. We have to remind ourselves it's not a threat because of knight takes f2. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, get rid of that. And uh, yeah, knight f6. Let's have a look. How does that work out? So after the move, knight f6. And okay, so what happens if. Oh, what, what, what? Is this what happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Alrighty. Okay. So, so, so now we have to find out. Yeah. Okay. So what is going <laughs> to happen, right? If pawn takes knight, let's, uh, let's have oh, bishop takes knight. Let's mm. uh, investigate those captures. So is this mm. a well-known idea to put the knight on F6? This is the first. So maybe. We, we probably must assume that they, they know about it. Yes. Yeah, so they probably know that uh, it won't come as a bolt from, from the blue to Sergei Karyakin. But, no. you know, pawn takes knight. Okay, so what happens mm. next? So now we go knight takes. Yep. Knight, sorry, flies. Just hovering around in the studio. Mm. So knight takes pawn and uh, pawn, pawn takes, bishop, pawn takes mm. knight. Bishop takes rook. Knight takes, ooh. And then... But that's this is <laughs> this, this is, is really bad. a big one. Yeah, this yeah. is bad, and uh, this is bad because the you know the rooks generally fight really well against against uh, let's go like this bishop and knight in an mm. end game, and that's because the rook rooks are actually very long range moves. Uh, it's a long range piece, and it has the capability to flick between the two sides very easily. Mm. And when you combine this with passed pawns on both sides of the board. Just very dangerous.